Hey, Stargazers, welcome back. My name is Nick. I'm a theaters manager at the Adler Planetarium, and you're watching Skywatch Wednesday. Well, this episode, we're looking forward to a dark sky holiday weekend, so we'll take a look at a few dimmer sights to look for as you look up at a dark sky. Well, the full moon was this past Sunday, and every night for the next couple of weeks, the moon will be less full and rising later and later in the night. And for the few nights surrounding the new moon, you have a chance to see very dark skies all night long. The next new moon coincides quite well with the Labor Day weekend, so if you've got the chance, go out and look up. That, of course, assumes you're away from all the city lights. Here in Chicago, you're not going to see much of a difference between a new moon and a full moon as far as light pollution goes. So let's take a little trip. We're going to head south to the Middle Fork River Forest Preserve, about 100 miles south of Chicago. This is the first international dark sky park in the state of Illinois. I've gone here several times for stargazing and imaging, and you can even reserve a campsite. No matter where you live, you can find light pollution maps online that'll help show you where the darker sites are. A dark sky on a moonless night gives you a great chance to see the Milky Way. Summertime in the Northern Hemisphere is the best time of the year to see this hazy band of light across the sky. And right now, it's ideally placed as soon as the sky gets dark. Just looking with your eyes, it's an awesome sight. But using binoculars or a telescope, you'll start to see all sorts of details, like star clusters, even some nebulae visible as brighter patches. As your eyes adjust to the darkness, you'll start to see more and more stars. And you might find that familiar patterns and constellations become harder to find with all the other stars visible. Well, let's take a look at a large pattern with many constellations around it the Summer Triangle, which will be straight overhead a couple hours past sunset. These three bright stars, Deneb, Vega, and Altair, will be visible even from light-polluted skies. But from here, we can see many more stars filling in and around the triangle. A beautiful part of the Milky Way goes through here, and several smaller, animal-related constellations populate the area and are fun to look for if you have the sky for it. Let's start within the Summer Triangle with the constellation of Volpecula, the fox. This is quite dim, and there's no way to create a real stick figure that looks like a fox, but the name of the brightest star in Volpecula tells a little bit about its history. The brightest star is called Anser, which is Latin for goose. The astronomer Johannes Hevelius invented the constellation of Volpecula in the late 17th century, and he called it the little fox with the goose and drew it as a fox with a goose in its jaws. In fact, for a time, some astronomers considered the goose a separate constellation. Well, the official constellation now is just Volpecula the fox, but the name Anser lives on as the unfortunate goose. Despite being relatively small and dim, Volpecula boasts one very well-known deep sky object, the Dumbbell Nebula. This is a star at the end of its life, it's shedding its outer layers in spectacular fashion. This is visible through binoculars, and with a telescope it starts to show its dumbbell or apple core shape. Also in this constellation is an interesting cluster of stars, known generally as the Coat Hanger Cluster. Once you've stumbled upon it with your binoculars, you'll see why the stars form an uncanny resemblance to a coat hanger. Beneath the feet of the fox is an arrow called Sagitta, this isn't an animal constellation, but since it's reasonably bright, it can be a useful waypoint in this part of the sky. It's small, but the stars aren't too dim, and as far as it goes, you could imagine these stars lying in a basically straight line as an arrow. It's an old constellation, included in the list of 48 described by Ptolemy in the 2nd century AD. It's often regarded as the arrow that Hercules shot to kill the eagle Aquila. It's located in a spot roughly in between those constellations of Hercules and Aquila, although it is facing the wrong way. The arrow contains one Messier object, a loose globular cluster of stars known as M71, that can be seen with binoculars or a small telescope. Moving just outside the Summer Triangle, we come to the delightful constellation of Delphinus, the dolphin. The diamond shape marks the head, and the trailing arc of stars marks the tail, of a leaping dolphin of stars. This is another constellation listed by Ptolemy and is often seen as the dolphin that saved a famous musician, Arion, when he jumped into the sea. The god Apollo put the dolphin in the sky as thanks for this, 
and the nearby constellation of Lyra the Harp, or Lyre, depicts Arion's instrument of choice. The four stars in the diamond shape of Delphinus are sometimes known as the asterism of Job's coffin. Just below Delphinus is a very dim and very small constellation, Equulius, the little horse. It is the smallest constellation visible from mid-northern latitudes, and only the Southern Cross is smaller in the entire celestial sphere. It's often said to be the offspring or brother of the fall constellation Pegasus, the flying horse, who is right nearby and rising earlier and earlier as the summer draws to a close. One last dim animal is hanging around the summer triangle, Lacerta the lizard. This is another dim one invented by Hevelius, who had a penchant for adding dim constellations as he saw fit to otherwise empty areas of sky. We've mentioned in earlier episodes the constellations of the Lynx and the Sextant, both of which were added by Hevelius. In the frontispiece of one of his star catalogs, he's depicted coming before the muse of astronomy, Urania, and seeking approval of his new constellations. He's holding the shield and the sextant, both of which are still recognized as constellations in the sky. And behind him is his dim menagerie of constellations, including the fox and the goose, the lizard, the lynx, the hunting dogs, and the little lion, Leo Minor. So beyond the big and bright stars and constellations of summer, there are some smaller and dimmer ones of interest. They might not pop out at you immediately, but with the right sky and a good imagination and a healthy dose of patience, you can trace out these dim little animals in a night sky safari. Well, that's what we have for you today. Thanks, as always, for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to Adler's YouTube channel and also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Happy stargazing. We'll see you next time.